and I was quite conscious of of the the way that media coverage was driven by by a consensus view at the time that that the that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction that that we were inevitably going to war with Iraq and that there was very little debate and partly because the the elite and the uh, the Democratic and the Republican uh, think tank circles, government circles at the time, and the elite media uh, were all persuaded of that. And, and it was a huge reinforcement to me of the need for multiple voices, uh, for more debate on the issues that, 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 that have such effect on, on all of us. And of course, we've lived the consequences of, of the inadequate debate that we had in 2002, 2003, uh, leading up to the war. So that was part of the case. So I went to, to the Pulitzer family uh, in the fall of 2005 and, and urged them to, to consider giving me seed money to, to start this, um, this initiative and to see what we could do with it. And so it began with just me, and, and then a few months later I hired Natalie Applewhite, who had a video documentary uh, background and an academic interest in, in international issues and, and media. And, and together we, we began uh, building, the, building the Pulitzer Center. It, it began with the idea that, that we would give a little bit of financial support to younger versions of myself in a way that, that people who I, I envision sort of helping uh, young people at newspapers like the Post-Dispatch or the Tribune or the Philadelphia Inquirer where you were, and, and that giving them a leg up so they, that they had a project or two and they had the ability to go out and discover that they had a passion for international reporting, that once they did uh, one or two of these with some help from the outside, that, that they would then be able to make the case for internal support. Mm -hmm. And we did a lot of that. If you look back, if you look back at our, our first year, we, we, you know, papers like the Post-Dispatch, the Boston Globe, Los Angeles Times, others were, were principal outlets for us, San Francisco Chronicle. And, and, but unfortunately, what, you know, the, the pace of the retreat by uh, traditional news media uh, outlets uh, has been astounding over the last five years. So that within, within a year or two of our starting, uh, most of the regional papers that, that I had seen as, as principal partners uh, were dismissing not only their uh, foreign uh, interest in foreign reporting, but also uh, eliminating their foreign editor positions and, and space in the newspapers so that papers that had strong weekend sections, analysis sections, that had two or three pages a day for world news, suddenly they had half a page and it was reduced to, to wire service briefs. And so those outlets have become, uh, and they had no money to pay, to pay freelancers. <coughs> and many, excuse me, many of, those, many of those newspapers had been really important over the decades before in developing the careers of young journalists. I mean, p young, young people who were out stringing and, and you know, living on very little, but they were, they had connections with newspapers, and they might they might do a piece for the Atlanta uh, Constitution, they might do a piece for the Globe or the you know, various newspapers, work their way up and get their names known. Suddenly, those editors were no longer there. You didn't have that relationship, and and the so what happened for us? Uh, I mean the, the our sort of joke internally is that it sometimes feels like we're the the, the Pony Express that we just we we've gone from one horse to another, and the horses keep falling out from under us. But but we fortunately we've gotten we go we go to better horses and so we <laughs> so we so that now you know now now our partners are, are PBS NewsHour and the Washington Post and Newsweek and Time and Foreign Policy Foreign Affairs and so we're the New York Times we're, you know, we're we're working with big national brands and that's that's good in the sense that 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 we get uh, we get to take advantage of their huge platforms and they still have you know big platforms in print and broadcast and online uh, but. The, it's still a loss to the country as a whole that, the, that the, these big metropolitan regional papers that, 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 that had their own take on these issues in, in years past do not any longer. They're just not, they're just not playing that role. 